I shared a little bit of New Year's Eve. Last year's word was the year of rebounding, restoration, revival. We personally experienced that in many ways, individually, but corporately, not to the extent that I was believing God for, and probably many of you didn't receive it to the extent maybe that you were believing it for. So a few weeks before the end of the year, I asked the Lord, what about that? And again, uh, I got a Christian friend that made this sign. I just told him the 2019 year of rebounding restoration revival. He put all those dots in there. And the Lord brought my attention to it to be continued. Then had me add 2020. However, the Lord impressed big time in my spirit that that isn't for everybody. And then we'll get into my message this morning. But it isn't for everybody. It's for those that will stand. It's for those that will sell out. And again, I watched, uh, last night I saw most of it, and I watched the ending of it today, but I want to see what Pastor Parsley had to say on New Year's Eve when he ministered. Confirms my message this morning. That if we are to stand, if we're to survive this year, there are certain things that we need to do. And then we'll get into that in my message this morning. But not everybody's going to stand. Not everybody's going to experience rebounding, restoration, revival. And I loved it because... I'm in agreement with it. I get that while it's because it's real easy. Well, 2020, renewed vision, clarity, focus, and all that. It didn't take a prophet to say that. And I loved it because that's what partially got on. But he got on to a whole slew of other things that if we're to stand and experience all that God has for us, there's certain things that we need to be willing to do. So despite all the other <coughs> prophetic words, and I watched on uh, Sid Roth, he had three prophets on there, and they gave their... Words for the country and the world, and da 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 da, and it's all fine. You know, some tough stuff and some of that as well. But what I'm hearing in my spirit is if we are to stand for to experience that and everything that God has for us, we can't be, quote, playing church. Yeah. Amen. We got to get back to Christianity 101, and that's some of what I'm going to get into this morning. We got to grow up. There's too many in the church that are baby five. Been in the church 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Easily get their feelings hurt. Easily get their offended. Every wind that blows through, they blow over by it. Now it's time that we grow up, church. There's quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. It's time that we grow up. But anyway, for my message this morning, turn with me to Matthew 6. Yes, and after Malachi, Malachi. And despite any, quote, words of conviction, Six. of judgment, provoking, or anything else, in Matthew 6, verse 25, says, Therefore I say, do you not worry about your life. So again, all the negative root wars, rumors of war, and all the other stuff that's going on. We're not to worry about any of that. But if we get to that place to where we're not going to worry about it, again, we need to grow up. There's some things that we need to do. So he says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. This is basic stuff right here. What you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Some cases y'all do with your bird feeders. <laughs> Are you not more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to a stature? Meaning you don't add anything to your life by worrying. And yet I, and why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And I know most of us know this next verse, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
And all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, all those things and everything else that you may be believing God for. All the prophetic words that have been spoken over this church body corporately or you individually. We don't have to worry about any of that. What do we need to do? Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. I actually preach, and I always tweak it some, and the Holy Spirit had me go in different directions from part of it. But actually, in 2016, I preach this. And the title of it is First Things First. First Things First. Back up to the beginning of Matthew. Verse 1. He says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you to the hypocrite, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. In verse 3, but when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And actually, I want to jump around through some other parts of Matthews. There's three things in there that God says, Jesus said, when you do these things, and he gave some instructions, and it wasn't if. And he started off right here in charitable deeds, giving. When you give. First things first. You want breakthrough in your life? You want to see your needs met? You need to be a giver. Amen. Mm -hmm. Got one amen. And I'm, you know. I said you need to be a giver. Amen. Again, you want your needs met. You are. Amen. You want a consistent harvest? You got to, and I already took up the offering, not doing a round two. You got to sow consistent seed. Amen. It's not just hit and miss or whenever the mood hits. Or, oh, well, I finally got a breakthrough. No, you need to be a consistent giver and sower. He said, when, not if. Right. Again, this is Christianity 101, but it's a reminder that we all need. Beginning of 2020, if we're to experience rebounding, you want to rebound in your finances? You want restoration in your finances? You want revival in your finances? Revive to bring back to life? First things first, determine that in 2020 and from here on out, I'm going to be a giver and I'm going to be faithful in it. Yep. Amen. Amen. Give you a few scriptures on each of these. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now bring that into modern times. He's talking your finances, your needs being met, your provision. You want to overflow? And again, I know Rick shared about how hard it is for the rich to enter heaven and all that. We're not chasing money. That's right. We're chasing him. But we all have needs that need to be met, yep. ministries that need to be fulfilled. And again, I've been in you know multiple foreign countries. I've seen the poverty there. Mm -hmm. that, when I was just in Kenya. Small, might have been two rooms. I actually didn't see his, but the add-on that I initially was supposed to stay in was a one room with a hole in the ground in the bathroom. Yeah. Let that one sink in. Yeah. But he paid 150 a month rent. What would you get for 150 month rent here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You find anything for 150 a month. Let me know. I'll move out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But he said, honor the Lord with your possessions with the first fruits. That means first. Even tithe is tenth. That's initial right off the top. Mm -hmm. But sad to say the statistics, I think it's less than 3% now of Christians, professing Christians, actually tithe. Well, we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. Well, if you actually read some of the comments of Jesus, grace was tougher than the law. Bingo. He said, you've heard it sir, said by Moses, if you look, that adultery was a sin. Right. He said, but I say unto you, if you even look at it as a woman, yeah. right. lustfully you've already committed adultery in your heart. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Jesus, and I'm going to share scripture even, at one point even, because I'll say, oh, Jesus never talked about the tithe. Yeah, he did. 
But again, I don't look at it as a law. It's a principle. Tithing began before the law, was during the law, and continued on after the law. Amen. Again, it's all our choice. I don't get up here and I take up the offering or I'm twist, beat you up and all that. I just give you the word. But if you want blessed financially, if you truly want to see increase in your life, first things first, you've got to be a tither, you've got to be a giver, and you need to be faithful in it. Exodus 22, 29 says, You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe produce in your juices. And again, I'll see these anti-tithe people on Facebook and the internet and all that stuff try to say, All tithing was, that was off of produce and da-da-da-da-da, never off of money. Increase. Well, then go out and buy a bunch of bananas and apples and get, get, give God a tenth of it. See if he blesses you. <laughs> Here's the uh, mad others. You can just write these down if you want to go to them. Amen. We're all familiar with Malachi. Yeah. Yeah. Will a man rob God? Right. But yet you've robbed me in tithes and offerings. People don't like to hear it, but if you're not given tithes and offerings, you're a thief. And I heard one preacher even say, I'm like, ouch. He said, if you're not tithing, do yet you borrowed money for a car and you bought a house and all that, you're living in a stolen car and a stolen house. Because you're using God's money for part of that. Mm -hmm. Now, I offend a lot of people, but <laughs> I rejoice in it. Because it's true. But it's still a biblical principle. But if we're faithful in giving of our tithes and offerings, He'll open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing so much so that we cannot contain. And He goes on to say that He'd rebuke the devourer for your sake. I don't have to go but around rebuking the devil. Off of my finances if I'm faithful in giving. Amen. Doesn't mean he's still not going to try to come against you. No. But devour, that means seed eater. New Testament, God gives seed to who? The sower. The sower. So yes, yeah, Satan's still going to come against you. But I don't spend, I mean, every now and then I might. But half the time it's just, I guess, old religious tradition thinking I need to. Yeah. And I'm like, God, you said you'd meet all my needs. You said you're my shepherd and I have no lack. Right. You said you'd rebuke the devourer for my name's sake. So get rebuking, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just write down, if you're taking notes, Luke 18, 11, and 13. But here's one where Jesus addressed it. And I also say this. There's the one story where Jesus was watching them as they gave. And the widow's might. Right. And he called it out. She gave out all that she, she gave all that she had. Well, there was many there that basically gave chump change because they were really blessed. That shows me a couple things. Number one, he watches. He pays attention to our giving. Don't think because Jesus ain't walking this earth that he still ain't watching what we give. Because he does. The other thing. It's the attitude of the heart, exactly. not the amount. Thank you. I could be a millionaire and, oh, I'm just throwing a hundred in here, whatever. I got a good pastor friend, got a millionaire in his church. Dude hardly gives squat. That pastor, well, they moved to a different location. Him and his boys always used to have to mow the church lawn because nobody else would step up, and it was quite a bit. And somebody even mentioned to that man because he's retired. Why don't you help out? Well, I will if they'll pay me 50 bucks every time. It's the heart that God looks at, not the dollar amount. But here's Matthew 23, 23. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe, right here, Jesus is addressing tithe, tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done, justice, mercy, and faith, without leaving the others undone. Mm -hmm. So Jesus addressed the tithe. Yes, you need to tithe. But he was going after their heart as well because they had no mercy. They had no justice. They had no faith. So we need justice, mercy, and faith. Along with our giving. Amen? Yep. Amen. So first things first. Determine beginning of 2020. If you're going to experience all that God has for you. We need to go back to the elementary things. And part of seeking first. The kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. 
And it's to build his kingdom. And guess what? It takes money to do it. Sometimes, yeah. The rent ain't free here. Hmm. Well, I was in Kenya as a man. And, and again, it's because of y'all's faithfulness. Been here five years. Mm -hmm. This past December. Not one time have we ever missed or been late or needing to ask our landlord for extra time because we don't have it. Amen. But the last day I was in Kenya, I got a, I had some internet off and on and got an email from him asking him where the rent was. Well, I put the rent in there the last Sunday that I was here. He didn't get it. Somehow it got took. There's a mailbox up on his porch that's a private one. But I was just somehow it blew away or got took away or whatever, but he didn't get it. So as soon as I got back, I rewrote him one, canceled the other one because I didn't know where it ended up. But first things first. There is rent here. There is utilities and all the rest. The same in your life. If you don't want to have to worry and be concerned about your food, your clothing, your shelter, and all that, determine that I'm going to covenant and be in partnership with God. Not as a legalistic, religious, I'm under the law type of thing. It's, right. We need to lose that mentality. And even then, again, I don't preach from it that much because a lot of preachers will use it to bring condemnation. The whole Malachi thing. You've been cursed with the curse. Well, under the new covenant, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. Mm -hmm. However, you're cursing yourself if you're not giving tithes and offering because you're not giving God anything to work with. Amen. He gives seed to the sower. If I'm not sowing, I'm giving God nothing to bless. No farmer is going to go out to this field, and I know they alternate one year's corn, usually one soybean. Corn grow in Jesus' name. You can decree and declare over your finances all you want. If you're not putting seed in the ground, there's not going to be any kind of harvest. That's right. So first things first, determine you're going to be a giver and faithful in your giving throughout this year. The second thing that Jesus got into in the beginning part of Matthew, verse 5. He says, and when you pray, notice he said, when you pray, he didn't say if, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corner of the streets, that they might be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have the reward. But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father. Man, my wife brought the glow meeting last night, shared from this verse, brought out something that I'd never seen myself before. And I don't claim to know it all by any stretch of the imagination. But I've never seen this. When you pray, go into your room, and when you've shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. Yeah, she brought it out last night. He's already there. Yeah. He's already waiting on you. Yeah. How many times has he been sitting there Waiting on you to enter the secret place to pray, and you don't show up. Right. Mm -hmm. Several years ago, I went to Assemblies of God men's conference, and a guy taught on prayer. Man, he convicted me big time. And he, we didn't get into that, but he got into praying and all that. But he said, if you had the opportunity, and it's funny because he used this example, to meet with Donald Trump, to get all the business advice that you could get, and you had a set time and appointment to meet with him. Would you miss it? He said, however, we can meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one that owns it all. And how many times have we left him and missed that appointment and not even bothered to seek his face? Amen. But yet we wonder why our life's a chaos so many times. This is good preaching for the first Sunday of 2020, whether you yeah. receive it or not. Because yeah. <laughs> if you'll get this and do this, and you can have your Christian church face on and smile and all that. But God knows all of our hearts. He knows what all of us are doing 24-7 and through the week in between Sunday and Sunday. You want this? You want all the other good prophetic words that have been shared or promises in God's word? we got to go back to first things first. That's right. So he's already there. And I'm like, that is good. So your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now I've heard some nitwits, again, they don't understand scripture. You know, if somebody prays out loud in front of a congregation, oh, the Bible says you're not to do that. Da, 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 and quote this verse. Yeah. Now you're ignorant, you don't understand the word. He's talking about motive. If my motive is I just want to be seen of men, so 
Oh, the greatest Jesus. <laughs> And get up praying and all this kind of stuff because I want to be seen a man. That's where God doesn't hear it. That's right. It's motives. All of its motives are giving motives, our prayer life motives. So again, it's when you pray. And it's when we pray in secret, and that's what's cool. The reward will come openly. We can look around, we can, and again, we all go through stuff. It rains on the just and the unjust. But if you're really going after God in that secret place, the rewards will be, people will see, even despite chaos or your boat rocking or the storms, or whatever, they'll see God's blessing and hand and favor on your life, despite whatever it is you may be going through. We're all familiar with, but again, too many aren't doing it. I hear churches quoted all the time. We've quoted it here, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. My thing is, when are we going to do it? Yeah. If my people, he didn't say the heathen, the sinner, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, I heard humility earlier, I think John, will humble themselves and pray. See, it's a proud person that won't pray. Well, some of you may catch that later. But it's a proud person that won't pray. A humble person knows they can't do anything without God. Amen. I can't build this church. You can't build this church. We play a part in it. But unless the Lord builds the house, our labor's in vain. But He's only going to do what He wants to do in response to our prayer. Amen. Our seeking His face. But we, the church, worldwide, Needs to humble themselves and pray. Seek his face. Turn from their wicked ways. Again, too many of the church are playing. Like I said, they want to hold on to their pet sin. Yeah. Thinking they can eat and drink from the Lord's table. But I can go over here to the table of demons too. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Amen. Turn from their wicked ways. <laughs> then I'll hear from heaven. When's he here from heaven? When you've humbled yourself, you've prayed, you've turned from your wicked ways. He said, then I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. Right, right, right. When are we going to do it, church? Exactly. When is the church going to do it? Right. And again, it's ridiculous how divided this nation is. Yes. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Yes. Well, just so you know, I mean, I haven't... Some may think, oh, you blocked me. I ain't blocked nobody off Facebook. I've got off for a while. Yeah. So I shut my Facebook down, Messenger down. Amen. This is part of my fasting, the beginning of the year and all that. I want to hear from God and not see a lot of the garbage. And it's a mixed bag that's yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. Anyway, I'm off of it for a while. So if anybody says anything, well, they post or block me. No, I ain't blocked nobody. It's I've disengaged it so ain't nobody can see my Facebook or contact me on Messenger. And I even had a pastor call. He texted me one day and Asked something about my Facebook, and I said, well, I shut it down for a while, da-da-da, and he goes, well, what about the people that need to get a hold of you? And I said, those that need to get a hold of me, or I care about getting a hold of me, and they know how to get a hold of me. If they all got my number, if you don't, I'll give it to you. Life does exist outside of Facebook. Thank you. We do have technology, and phones, and email, and face to face. To Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> get off of Facebook and get your face in the book. Wish I could say I originated that. I can't that was that. free. That's old, but it still preaches. But it's time that the church humbles themselves, prays, seeks God's face, turns from our wicked ways, then he'll forgive our sin. Here our land. Matthew 21, 22 says, Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Amen. I shouldn't have to give you a bunch of scriptures on the faithfulness of God. And that God call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great mighty things which thou knowest not. There's promises all through God's word that he responds to us when we pray. Amen. So I'm just giving you a couple here today. But if you ask in prayer, believing, you can expect to receive it. Glory to God. Well, I've been praying. I've been believing. I haven't received yet. Stand. Right. Keep on standing. That's preaching. Right. Keep on standing. Right. When you've done all, stand. Right. See, that's the thing. Are you doing all before you're standing? Yeah. You can stand, but if you're not Jesus, Holy Ghost. You can stand, but if you're not clothed in His armor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
fall down now. I'll save that one for another time. It's when you've done all, Stan. This is part of the all. When you give, when you pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 18, 1, Jesus was speaking. It says he spoke a parable to them that men always, always ought to pray and not lose heart. If you've lost heart, are you praying? Because if you're praying like you should, you won't lose heart. Luke 21, 36 says, watch, therefore, yeah. and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Are we watching and praying? We know the story in the garden when Jesus went there with the disciples, wanted them to watch and pray with them. What were they doing? Sleeping. Sleeping. Yeah. Wonder how many in the church today Instead of watching and praying, we're sleeping. Right. And then we wonder why we keep getting hit. Incoming. Yeah. There can be incoming, but you can be warned about it. So you're not in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you're in the right place. Amen. I mean, I've heard stories of people that were supposed to take flights. Christians, Holy Spirit spoke to them. Don't get on it. And then something happens with that flight. And he spares their life. Yeah, that's right. We need to be, because he said, my sheep know my voice. Well, we need to be listening yeah. and obeying as well. But we need to watch and pray. A couple others, you can just write these down. Acts, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 4. Acts 10, 1 through 4. James, the 5th chapter, verses 13 to 16. 16, the effectual, fervent prayer. Fervent, fired up. Of a righteous man avails or accomplishes much. Not some wimpy prayer. Oh, Lord, if it's your will, blah, blah, blah. No, we need to pray prayers of faith. Get a hold of the promises of God's word. Say what God says about your situation. Get scriptural backing for what you're praying for. So first things first, giving. Determined, beginning of this year, from here on out, I'm going to be faithful in my giving. Second thing is prayer. When you pray. Previously, when you give. We need to be a people of prayer, church. Yes. Individually and corporately. Next one, Matthew chapter 6, moving down to verse 16. Moreover, if you fast, when? That again, Eddie? When, not if. When you fast. Well, I did it once 20 years ago. <laughs> when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. Oh, I can't help declare. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men as to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Yeah. But you, when, not if, first things first. When you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father, here we go again, who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Yeah. Yeah. First things first, I want to challenge you, encourage you, and a lot of churches do it corporately, sometimes we do and all that, and some, you know, they'll already start it tomorrow, but you haven't had any heads up and all that. I just encourage you, through January, whenever you want to start, Start fasting. Yeah. Some will do 21 days. Some do 30, 40, whatever. Char and I usually do a 21 day and it's more of a Daniel fast. Yeah. This year I'm more so doing minimal carbs but no sweets whatsoever. And I'm a chocoholic. <laughs> so I'm fasting that. Fasting Facebook. Look at your life. And fasting by Bible de definition <laughs> is to do without food or water. But we've made, wow, I'll be without TV, da, 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 da. Well, that'll still do something to your flesh if you're a TV addict or a Facebook addict or whatever. So I encourage you, when you pray, seek God, ask him what he'd have you to do in crucifying your flesh the beginning of this year. Because that's really what fasting does. It crucifies your flesh, puts your flesh under so you can clearly hear from God. 
That y'all know we're spirit, soul, and body. Right. Well, we're supposed to be spirit led, not just Holy Spirit, but our spirit should be led by Holy Spirit. But too many times our spirit is led by flesh. That's right. Jerry ain't to be led by Jerry flesh. He's to be led by the Spirit of God, Amen. leading my spirit. Amen. So when you fast, mm -hmm. so I encourage you to begin this year. Yes, be a giver. Yes, be a prayer. But begin by fasting. And even throughout the year, as the Lord leads, problem is, he may be talking, but we ain't listening. Right. June could come along, and he's wanting you to fast, and you ain't listening. Several years ago, I shared the testimony when God healed short of blood clots in her legs. <laughs> I declared a fast this one day, and I'm out leaving my office, and I'm not going to stop praying fasting until I hear from God and she gets healed, da 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 It was only part of the day the Lord spoke to me, but he rebuked me in part of that. He said, I'm not healing your wife because you fasted. You should do that on a consistent basis anyway. I heard clearly, hello. Then he proceeded to heal her. That's something we need to do more than just once every however many years or months or whatever. But we need to seek God in it. What do you want me to fast? What do you want me to deprive this stinking flesh of so I can clearly hear your voice? See, fasting doesn't move the hand of God. And that's sum up your theology. Fasting doesn't move the hand of God. It moves you to a position to where you can clearly hear from God. It puts you in a position where your faith is increased. Why? Because I'm more dependent on Him because I'm depriving my flesh of all this food or Mountain Dew or whatever it is. Well, I saw a couple people. Oh, gotta get rid of the Mountain Dew, yeah. I love that. It's a squirrel thing on Facebook. His eyes are like bugged out. Yeah. And he had so much caffeine and whatever the energy drinks are. He's like, ah! Red Bull. Red Bull, that was the one I was thinking of. So when you fast, Joel 1.14 says, Call, consecrate means set apart a fast. Call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to God. So when you're fasting, you should be praying. Right. Yeah. I'm fasting dinner, so I'm going to watch my favorite Tuesday night show. No, if you're fasting dinner, you should be praying or in the Word. Right. See, that's the whole secret right here. How you can, well, I just don't have that much time to, to pray, to read the Bible. I work, I got kids, whatever it is. While you're fasting your dinner, or your lunch, or your breakfast, or whatever it is. Hello? Amen. Pray. Ezra 8.21. Ezra 8.21. My heading says, like abbreviated, fasting and prayer for protection. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves. Again, see the humble. Humility. We might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. You need wisdom. You need direction at the beginning of the year. Seek God in prayer and fasting. And you'll hear clearly from the Lord what to do. Nehemiah 1.4 says, So it was when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. One more, turn for me to Isaiah 58. Lots of times we'll refer to these as the fasting scriptures. These are so powerful. Because every time I read these, these motivate me even more mm -hmm. to fast and in my fasting. Right. And when you're fasting, pull the ones out that apply and make that part of your declaration that that's what you're believing God for. Isaiah 58, we'll start with verse 6. It says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness. Mm -hmm. All you little angels sitting here today that struggle with areas of wickedness, fast. I just can't break this addiction. Fast. Loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. I'm just so oppressed. I'm so depressed. I'm so beat down. Fast. And yeah, I'll tell you, in the very beginning, especially if you're doing a real stringent one where you're getting rid of a lot of food, you're going to have some mind battles because your flesh is going to be screaming out, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. 
You know, got some of them cars. I'm hangry. Because you're hungry, so you're angry. So yeah, you got to press through some of that. And there'll be some torment and mind games there. But if you'll stick it out, the bonds of wickedness, the oppression, the heavy burdens, you'll be set free. Goes on to say, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring to your home or to your house the poor who are cast out. Obviously, you got to be led by the Spirit in that, not just bring everybody in your house and feed everybody. But it's to be concerned about others. When you see the naked, you cover him. <laughs> not hide yourself from your own flesh. This is the part I like. When we fasted the way God wants us to fast, verse 8, then your light shall break forth like the morning. That's right. Ooh, yeah. What's light do? It illuminates. Yes. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. I'm seeing it more and more on TV and different documentaries and stuff. How much doctors and medical science is talking about how good fasting is for the body. Yeah. Organs rejuvenate. Liver cleanses. There's so many good things. I know they do different cleanses and all that is a part of it. But when we fast... There's so much good that it does for your body. And obviously the doctors, unless they're Christian, don't get into the spiritual side of it. Right. But even for your body, you want your health to spring forth speedily, your healing to come forth speedily. God heal me, God heal me. No, get off the sugar, diabetic you. <laughs> I know some of that can't be controlled. But a lot of our issues, it's us. Won't put that fork down. I'm eating at 11 o'clock and then gouging myself in the meal and I'm going to bed. Well, that's real healthy. Hmm. Well, even through fasting to the Lord because he, he illuminates and he'll speak to you. He can reveal things to you of error and mistakes and things that you're doing even health-wise. Yeah, yeah. That if you'll lay this down, if you'll start doing this, if you'll stop this, whatever it is, and all of a sudden, well, I feel healthy now. <laughs> I started Wednesday, so any like cuckoo stuff, just excuse it. Beyond the normal. Got some of the brain fog from a little bit of carbs. <laughs> then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry out and he will say, here I am. Amen. But then he's given us more instruction. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of your finger, quit worrying about the speck in somebody else's eye when we get that telephone pole in ours. Yeah, the pointing of finger and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. Your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually. You want continual guidance? Fast and pray. And satisfy your soul in drought. Strengthen and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old ways places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. And then it goes on. Bottom line, you want to rebound, restoration, revival. You want healing. You want breakthrough. You want all these other things in our life. We need to get back, church, to first things first. Right. And seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's when you give, when you pray, when you fast. That's the power team. All oh, members, you know, the weightlifters and do all the stuff. That's the real power team. Giving, fasting, and praying. And when we're giving, fasting, and praying, there's another trinity to add to the mix. You're going to see God move mightily in your life. So as we begin 2020, and I'll hear some key benefits of fasting. Intimacy with God mm -hmm. helps promote humility. You need to come to Him in humility. But he'll take you to a whole nother level of it. Oh, Jesus, if I could just have a fruit loops. No. <laughs> Promotes humility. Yields deliverance and breakthrough. So intimacy with God. Promotes humility. Yields deliverance and breakthrough. Yeah. So I want to encourage a firehouse beginning of 2020. Yes, believe God for...
promises in his word. Believe God for prophetic words. But know you got to do your part. A good one I would recommend. There's one I haven't watched yet. John says it's good. Ken Christmas. Yeah. Kent Christmas supposedly gave a good word. But if you go to Sid Roth, then you can find him on YouTube and all that. He had three prophets. He usually does it every year on. And they gave words for the year. And a lot of powerful stuff in there. A lot of it, yes, is blessing in certain areas. But there's other parts that there's things that we need to do. And when I'm got on to the fact that there's going to be some big name ministries that are going to be taken down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And again, it's not something we should quote. And I'm not saying anybody is rejoice over. No. We need to pray for him. Because God's still a God of mercy. And even what John spoke this morning, he is a God of mercy. 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 He is a merciful God. Mercy. Suffer and suck it out of Louis. <laughs> Let mercy triumph judgment. But we've got to be in the right place. We've got to be in the right position. We need to be humbling ourselves, praying, seeking his face, turning from our wicked ways. We need to be giving. We need to be praying. We need to be fasting. Well, that sounds like a bunch of works. Faith without works is dead. No, none of that saves you. But if you want to be the more than conqueror, the overcomer that he's called you to be, we need to do first things first. We need to be people of prayer. I didn't get into this, but this goes along with it. Students of the word. And that's a lot of what Pastor Parsley got on. We need this. You need to be saying what this says. He said, if you're to survive, that's kind of paraphrasing, or might have been how exactly I said, if you're to survive 2020, you need to get into this. Right. You need to be saying what this says, and you need to be praying. Right. And he said he had asked, I don't know how long ago it was, recently, yeah. how many in the church knew what the word logos meant? Is it just word? Words. Written. written word. The majority in his church didn't know. What's rhema mean? The majority in the church didn't know. A lot of that's basic disciple making Christianity. See, flat out said, we're getting back to the basics. We're getting back to do these things because if you're to survive, we share testimonies of different ones that had miracles in the past, it's because he was preaching those things. Say what God's word says. Get into God's word. Pray. Yep. So I encourage you and challenge you in it. In 2020, let's be faithful givers. Let's be faithful in prayer. Let's fast again as the spirit leads. But I do want to encourage you the first of this year, whether you start tomorrow or you need a few days or a week to <laughs> mindset or whatever, but I want to encourage you to begin a fast. Deprive your flesh of something that it desires. There could be many things to set yourself apart to hear more clearly from God. Because I'll bet in many cases some of the hindrances to some of our breakthroughs because we're not hearing from God of some things that either we need to lay down or some things that we need to do. And if we'll do what he says to do, he'll bless us. Right. Was initially going to preach it, but then the Lord said, no, you start out with this. I got another message and it's going to be a two-parter. Increase God's way. If we want to increase, and yes, part of that's financially, but it's in other areas as well, we got to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's going to start it next week or the week after, but I will be preaching that one. Stand to your feet. Yeah. See, we still stand that Set way. You. <laughs> Even though this is still our mentoring. Did this word encourage anybody or provoke anybody? Amen. And again, it does me. Don't think I'm, you know, riding on the mountaintop always the way that I need to be doing it every year. Yeah? My wife and she in here, so I can say it. She's still, and she's been doing it since the early 2000s, the first time we had the church. Two days a week does a 24-hour fast. One day a week, it's primarily praying for me, Lord Jesus. That kind of messed me up one day. I need that much, a whole day just for me. And the other's for the kids and grandkids. And I know the church is involved in all that, but she's still, and she's been doing that since probably 2003, 2004, still. And then if something's coming up or whatever, she'll get all uh, over. I'm like, you don't have to get that legalistic. Make it up then another night or whatever. But she has two set nights. She's been doing it. I'm not even asking for that. I'm just asking, let's start this year out, whether it's, you know, again, we're doing 
unless the Lord extends it for us, 21 days. So I encourage some of you to join us in 21 days. And it doesn't, again, I've already started and all that, but just in your own calendar or whatever, 21 days out. Or if the Lord leads you to go longer. But then you need your list of what you're believing God for. Where you're expecting Him to break through. Where maybe you need healing. So I shared last night at the a glow thing last year, she had, I think, 10 things that she had written down. The Lord let her go back to it at some point. And there was four that did happen last year. She goes, well, Lord, what about the others? And I forget 100% what she said. But basically, it was continue to press in and stand and believe God for it. So regardless, even if you're carrying over things from last year, believe God for it. Yeah. But the only way our spirit's going to be built up, the only way we can stand the only way we can overcome all that is. Because you may think things, oh, we can just pray and things are going to get easier in this world. What we see happening is this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Some things in here aren't going to be changed. And even some of them prophets on Sid Roth, stuff that they said, that doesn't mean that it's automatically going to happen. The church needs to vote. The church needs yeah. to pray. Right. So we can sit here and say all night, God, you said whatever. Again, are you doing your part? We need to do his our part. Let him do what he needs to do, but he's going to do for the most part what he wants to do through us. So the willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. Well, Father, I thank you for this first Sunday of 2020. I thank you for this word of first things first. I pray that each and every one of us not only heard this word, but will obey this word. That we will determine that as we start this year out and from here on out, that a major part of seeking first your kingdom, God, and your righteousness, so that all of our needs will be met, is that we are faithful givers, faithful prayers, and faithful fasters. That we do all these things on a consistent basis as you lead. Although we know that giving should be weekly or when we get paid, praying should be daily. Give us this day our daily bread. So we need to be praying daily. Fasting as you lead us and prompt us, Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm believing and continuing to believe this year for rebounding, restoration, and revival. Even more in our lives personally and definitely more where the Firehouse Church is concerned. And for any others that are here that are willing to pay the price, God, and do what they need to do to be positioned for it. As well as every other prophetic word. Lord, we look to you. We thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our, pa our faith. We thank you that it's your divine power that gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So we just continue to draw on your power this year. And we know that that power ultimately comes from the secret place. So let us be a people that goes in that secret place. Lord, you're already waiting for us. And we know that as we seek your face in the secret place. You will reward us openly. I pray your continued blessing, favor upon each and every one that's here today. And I thank you, Father, that as we do delight in you, you will continue to give us the desires of our heart. We give you praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. God bless you.